Why we are talking of diabetes, hyperglycemia in pregnancy? Because every woman who you see in the reproductive age group, either she's planning pregnancy or is already pregnant, is definitely somebody who needs to be very, very, very monitored very carefully because of all the complications of hyperglycemia that can manifest in pregnancy. Uh, we all know that the prevalence of hyperglycemia in pregnancy is going up and Southeast Asia leads one in four live births in the IDF Southeast Asia region are affected by hyperglycemia in pregnancy. And when we talk of the burden of hyperglycemia in pregnancy, of course, 80% is gestational diabetes, but there's another 10% a proportion of cases due to diabetes detected prior to pregnancy, so ladies who already have diabetes and have planned to become pregnant, or a number of cases where the lady may not have been aware that she is diabetic, but is diagnosed with diabetes in the first trimester itself. So you have a large burden of women with hyperglycemia in pregnancy, broadly divided into gestational diabetes and pre-existing diabetes. Pre-existing diabetes is... Slides are not moving there. Are they moving now? No. Yeah. Okay. There's a lag. Next film. So they're moving now? Yeah. So this is something that I've already talked about, the increasing burden of diabetes in pregnancy. Now, if you try to differentiate, there's always a gray line. There's no clear-cut differentiation. If you look, uh, you know, if you look at the conventional guidelines, most of the global guidelines actually said that GDM is any degree of glucose intolerance that is diagnosed at any time in pregnancy, immaterial of how you treat it. That was the conventional approach. Then we decided that no, there's a difference in the way you manage gestational diabetes versus pre-gestational diabetes, and that is where the ADA started to draw a line. So currently, the ADA clearly says that a woman who's diagnosed with diabetes in the first trimester, even if she's aware that she has diabetes or she's not aware, is to be labeled as pre-gestational diabetes. Now, this could be type 1, type 2, or it could be MODI. And gestational diabetes is diabetes that is diagnosed purely in the second or the third trimester, which is clearly not pre-existing diabetes, and you've done a glucose test and ruled out diabetes in the first trimester. So that's the differentiation globally that the ADA guidelines say. But there's a difference. When it comes to the Indian ethnicity, the Southeast Asian ethnicity, we know we have an 11-fold increased risk of developing hyperglycemia in pregnancy compared to the whites, compared to the Caucasians. So our phenotype, our genotype is such that the prevalence of GDM is very high and that is why the Indian guidelines, the DIPSI guidelines that are acknowledged by the WHO, by the IDF, clearly say that basically Hyperglycemia in pregnancy is a manifestation of beta cell dysfunction that happens in pregnancy, may have an onset or first recognition in pregnancy, and therefore, if a lady is not a known diabetic before she gets pregnant and you've picked up any degree of dysglycemia in pregnancy, that is labeled as gestational diabetes. So now why is it important is because if it is very early pregnancy and you have a woman with uncontrolled blood sugars at that point, Miscarriages are very, very common. The pregnancy does not sustain. There is an increased risk of congenital malformations, cardiac neural, uh, neural tube defects, and in Kefili, sacral agenesis, all these. Plus, if there is hyperglycemia later on, maybe in the second or the third trimester, again, there's a large number of adverse neonatal as well as maternal complications that you need to watch out for. Most important being, of course, polyhydramnios, macrosomia, preeclampsia, assisted birth, a cesarean section sometimes, shoulder dystocia, all these different problems. Now, why we are talking about glycemic control in pregnancy is because we know that if, if the lady is not on tight targets, each 1% increase in A1C above 7%, the odds of that pregnancy being affected with a congenital anomaly will increase by 30% if it is early pregnancy. So that is why preconception HbA1c target is very, very important. And the problem is not only with the current pregnancy, but a baby who is exposed to hyperglycemia in pregnancy has long-term 
risk of developing diabetes, NCDs, becoming obese, getting metabolic syndrome. So it is not only the mother who is at a risk of get, turning into a diabetic later on and getting a plethora of all these metabolic problems, but the baby also. So it's two generations at risk and that is why you need to understand this very, very importantly. Now maternal health does impact the NCD burden. So on the one side in India, we have maternal undernutrition, malnourishment. On the other side, you have gestational diabetes, overfeeding, an overweight mother giving birth to a baby. Both of these predict a development of hypertension, type 2 diabetes and IGT for the baby as well. And therefore, the solution to actually nip the NCD epidemic in the bud is to have a baby who is born with an optimal birth weight, which means 3 to 3.5 kgs. So a child who is not exposed to dysglycemia in pregnancy, born with an optimal birth weight, probably the risk of NCDs is less. Therefore, the goal of early screening and management is not only to improve the perinatal outcomes, but also to prevent the long-term maternal and fetal effects. And that is why this is a very beautiful line from Louis Zomanovic's words, where she says that, you know, the glycemic control should be so good that the fetus is not able to perceive that the mother had any degree of hyperglycemia in pregnancy. So that is the first step when we talk of diabetes prevention, diabetes awareness, camps, everything we're doing. But this is where if you really want to prevent obesity and diabetes in the offspring, you have to look at the fetus, at the baby. And that is why we are all signatories to the St. Vincent Declaration, which says that you need to achieve a pregnancy outcome in a diabetic woman that approximates that of a non-diabetic woman. So with that context setting, I will now invite uh, Dr. Chitra, who will uh, talk to us about gestational diabetes. After this, we'll have Dr. Pramila, who'll talk on pre-gestational pre diabetes, and then we'll open up for the panel discussion. discussion.